Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Scripture Cathedral on a Thursday night, and God is still good, and I'm glad I'm still in the land of the living. <laughs> Although everything around us says it's, it's not good, but I'll tell you again, God is good all the time, and he's worthy to be praised. Uh, tonight, tonight, we're going to, to talk about how Christians should respond to the pandemic, how Christians should respond to the pandemic. Um, tonight I have with me, let me see who I got here. Uh, Minister Michael Sharp is to my right. Uh, I'd like to introduce everybody, just in case we picked up some new viewers. And, and by the way, viewers, can you share this? Share this with your friends and, and, and whomever you have in your uh, on your Facebook page, share it with them. Uh, next to Minister Michael Sharp is uh, Elder Matthew Johnson. And next to me is uh, First First Lady Doretha Long. And then to my left here is Minister Sean Townsend and Elder Maverick Parker. So tonight, again, we're going to talk about how Christians should respond to the pandemic. Um, Somebody help me out. Let me see what, what some of the things you guys think that uh, how we should respond to it. Let's start off that way, and then I'll go into mine. First of all, Pastor, your attitude has to be different towards God. That's number one. Number two is, is that the scripture says in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, the second verse, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, each one of the, um, when, you, when you think about your attitude towards Christ, your attitude towards church, um, I'm reminded of the story with the three Hebrew boys. They had an attitude when it came down to the king. Um, when they was thrown in the fiery furnace, he said, we are not careful to answer you in that manner, O king. To me, that's an attitude towards the king. So your attitude has to be different. I will, it's like, I, I am going to church. I am going to serve God. Satan will not defeat me. Your attitude has to be different. Thank you. A anybody else? Speaking on attitude, um, I was um, looking at Matthew chapter 5, and it talks about the Beatitudes. And uh, one of the things that definitely is called for more than anything else today are peacemakers. Mm. Um, in Matthew 5 and 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And so God has left his spirit here with us to empower us, to keep us. And we're supposed to be able to share peace, love, and joy with the fruits of the spirit with the people that are out here that are distraught and, you know, in dire straits. Um, and then verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So this is, this time is not about us. It's about the kingdom. That's right. It's about the kingdom and kingdom folk, <laughs> kingdom folk. That's why I'm seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. And the kingdom folk will be okay. Uh, let me let me see. Let me let me see if I can go to what I have. Number one, we should not fear. We talked about that uh, on in our last um, our last uh, time we were on, and we should not fear. We as Christians should not fear, knowing that our heavenly Father will be with us. Uh, Matthew twenty. 8 and 20 assures us of this. If you read on down in that scripture, it says, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Anybody believe that? Is God with you right now? Everywhere I go, everywhere I be, he's with me. <laughs> he's with me. Just because we cannot have 
a, a, a service does not mean that God is not with me. I don't leave God at the church. I take him wherever I go. That's right. See, that's, that's the misconception. The church is not this building. No, sir. No matter how beautiful this sanctuary is, this is not the church. Not the the church. church is on the inside of you. Inside. We represent the mystical body of Christ. I, I have a portable church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can take it anywhere I go. And, and, and this, then I looked on, I said, well, Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge. And strength, a very present help in trouble. And listen, America is in trouble. But God is my present help. In other words, God will be our refuge, which is a hiding place. And the reason he is a very present help is because when we call on him, he already knows where we are and he already is ready to answer. A very present help. Sometimes, sometimes in a case of an emergency, uh, you have to dial nine one one. That help isn't there at that moment. That's right. As a matter of fact, they'll try to keep you on the line and talk you through a couple of things. But when I call on Jesus, at that ver well, he, somebody said he was there all the, all the time, waiting patiently. He's there. I want everybody that's viewing us tonight to know that God is there. Even, even in this dark hour, God is there. He's waiting on you to call on him. Pastor, the Lord has inclined his ear to hear the cry of his children. So when we get in trouble, you got to know who to call. That's right. In, 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 in the time that we live in and, uh, Second Timothy, Second Timothy declares that we are living in perilous times. Uh, when, when Paul wrote it, he was looking down through the scope of time. But now we're actually living in because he said in the last days, perilous times shall come. But now they're here. So now that they're here, and this is the interesting thing, when um, you don't, you, you shouldn't wait to get in until you get in trouble to do the right thing. But, but see, see, <laughs> see, that's, that's a good point because most people, Wait until they get in trouble and then try to do the right thing. The right Case thing. in point, some people, uh, uh, they get behind on their mortgage and they don't contact the mortgage company. Yeah, yeah. They try to fix it themselves. Fix it themselves. But you got to have communication. You got to. And our communication is with the Father who's That's in right. heaven. And, and when, when I, just like Peter, when he stepped out on the boat, and he began to sink. He didn't have time to call on the other disciples. No. <laughs> like, Jesus, help me. And the Lord extended his hand and pulled him up out of the water. Something that you said in the beginning of your sentence when you said that our Father hears our cry. Yes, he inclines his ear to hear That's our cry. Right. Now, when Shane or Sierra cries, I might not know their cry. That's right. That's right. That's but when my daughter right. promised cry, yes, yeah, yeah. What's wrong with my daughter? Yep. Yep. But this is the thing. Everybody that is a child of God, he knows your cry. Yes. Yes. It's distinct. It's distinct. <laughs> and, and he knows what it means. <laughs> he knows if you're playing. He knows if you really are you in a desperate situation and he'll if you're in dire straits, he knows how to react. Mm. The thing is, he can send the answer to us all at the same, at the same time. Yes. You know, and, 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 and see, but the problem with that is, Minister Shop, is we have to take heed to his answer. He's sending the answer now. Yes, Lord. The church is the answer. He's telling us we're the answer. If we do what we're supposed to do, this thing will be fixed. Yes, sir. Yes, I believe that. That's right. If my people, which are called by my name, Lord, have mercy. Humble yourself. Yes. <laughs> so, 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 number one, we should not fear because we know God is with us. Number two, hold on to your faith. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 and 1, and 
I'll be reading from the Living Bible says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Yes, we should hold on to our faith, even in life's most difficult times. When we have faith, it gives us the title deed to knowing, even though we cannot see the outcome, our faith ensures us that it will get better. It is our declaration of action. Your faith is your declaration of action. I'm going to ask someone that's looking at us, where is your faith? Don't put it in the government. Don't put it in the, the church. Don't put it in church folk. Where is your faith? I can answer you right now. My faith is in God. He is the author and the finisher. You can trust in his word. You know, just like in these times, you know, no, the the no. We're we're discussing what should we be doing in these times. All right. So the Lord said He told His disciples, "Look, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you the Comforter. Mm -hmm. And if you got the Holy Ghost, it's good to have it right now, because yes. He said, "I will not leave you comfortless." And say for instance, He said, "I will bring all things back to your remembrance, all things that I've that we have." Whatever things we have done together, whatever things we have seen. So say, for instance, worship, we're there all the time. We don't have to be in the building of worship, thinking on the goodness of the Lord, yes. thinking on the Bible says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, he said. You know, in these times, we need to think on these things. You know, the times we fellowship together, the times we, and, and God knows we're looking forward to coming back together again. Yeah. But those sermons and messages and the times we spent at the house of God, those things are of value right now. And I have the Holy Ghost. And, you know, and the Holy Ghost, when you got it, it gives you some peace. Oh, yeah. We should, be, we, we, should, we should have some peace right now. And if you got the peace of God, which passes all understanding, and you could rest in God's word, I will not leave you comfortless. That's mm. what the Bible says. See, our faith is not based upon the senses, which yield uncertainty but rather on the word of God. Yes, Somebody said, I'm standing on the word of God. It's never failed. You got to stand on the word of God. I don't care what's going on. You got to stand on the word of God. Some people are standing on the wrong thing. You got to stand on the word of God. It's good to know. The Bible says we walk by faith. And not by sight. If if we had to depend on, as you just said a moment ago, our senses to tell us uh, what we should do, we would all be panicking. We would all be losing our mind. But because we don't believe what, first of all, you can't believe everything you see. You can't believe everything you read. But you still got to stay informed. Yes. <laughs> that's, the, that, that, that's, that's the precursor. You got to stay informed. But you can't believe it all. And you got to, no matter what comes across the airwaves, you still have to have faith in God, trust in God, believe in his word, stand on his word. Um, the Bible says in Psalms 37 that we fret not thyself because of evil. Do. Fret not. This is not a time to, to, to be afraid. This is not a time to, to be scared. This is not a time to um, lose, your, lose your literal mind because s some people are really that, that afraid. But we got to trust in God with all our heart and See, all our mind. These times are putting us to the test. Everybody that testified, for God I live and for God I die. Yes, and there's a scripture in the Bible. I got somebody help me out where it says, "I will let nothing separate me, separate. Separate me from the love of God." Book of Romans. Nothing. Okay, give me a nothing that can separate you. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what it says. Nothing. nothing. I told the church a few weeks ago when I was preaching, I love you, first lady, but you can't separate me from God. My Lord. I love my church members, but you cannot separate me from the love of God. Nothing. You got to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor, in wartime, 
you got to have an offensive plan. You got to have one to respond back to you. And you got to, you know, you, you know, most times we don't, we don't, you know, we, if we had seen this coming, we could have better planned for it. But we didn't see it coming. And, you know, you got to have a, an offensive a plan also to come back, back against your enemy. Because he, he's, you know, the devil's been around a long time, a long time. And he knows the word of God just as better than any of us sitting here. He's been around a long time. But if we got faith like you said, and God said, my word is forever settled in heaven. Mm. It is not going to change. And the, and, and the Bible says that Jesus, he made an open show of the devil openly, openly. And the, the most powerful one in the scripture says, like God said, upon the, Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then turn right around and say, my word is forever settled in heaven. See, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, that's why this place is not the church. That's right. That's right. We might be on some type of lockdown, but this place is not the church. Yes, sir. The church does not represent the church. And I like something you said uh, Elder Johnson, we got to go on the offensive. Don't you know David knew how to go on the offensive? He almost messed up. Mm -hmm. But he encouraged himself. Yes, he did. Yeah. In the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he went after his stuff. Yes, sir. Now, listen, years ago, my dad preached a sermon. I'm going to the enemy's camp and I'm going to take back everything, everything. that Lord. he's stolen from me. With, with that, speaking of war, like Ephesians talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Yes. And specifically in this time, verse 13 in chapter 6, it says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a day in every believer's life, in our just living experience, where everything that we have believed, everything that we have been taught, everything that has been poured into us, it's going to be tested. And it says, having done all to stand, stand. Mm. And in this particular wartime, one of the enemies that we're going to have to fight in one way or the other is idleness. Mm -hmm. Now that you can't go anywhere, mm. everything that you can do, do it. Because the warfare now is also in your mind, too. Because the things that you would do to distract yourself from the things that you may not have addressed up until this point. Mm -hmm conversations that you should have had with individuals in your house. Like these things, now that you can't do, that idleness is what got David in trouble. When he should have been at war, but he was at home That's by right. himself. Like stay busy in what you can do, having done all to stand, stand. Hmm. You see, what's going on now is if you look at it, you're isolating people at home talk to your son and I said, oh, you decided to come out tonight. He said, I couldn't stay in the house. <laughs> we, are, what, we are social yes. creatures. Yes. See, when you, when in this situation, it messes with your mind. Yes. And, and, and it's interesting, Pastor, because um, back to Minister Saudi's point, the, there's an old saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Yes. He is beating, well, for those of us who trust in God, maybe not so much, but we're still confronted with that issue that we have to contend with the beating, the constant beating of having an idle mind. Now, what should we be doing now is, is the, 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 the question of the night. We should be praying. We should be reading. Um, we should be praising God every opportunity that we get. Um, we can't not worship until we set up an atmosphere of praise. If we want God to show where we are, we got to set that atmosphere that he's used to being in so that he can show up where we are. And that'll get your mind off of some of the, 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 the idleness and Netflix and all this other stuff that we're looking at. I heard somebody say the other night, I'm Netflixed out. Yes, sir. <laughs> How many more series can we watch? Some of this is um, a time for teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Because it goes back to the old days when parents used to sit down with their children and teach them about God. Yes. Sunday school teaching on Sundays when you can't get to church. How much word do you know in your, within yourself that your child can say, yes, my mother do trust in God, or my father is walking up right before God. So what are you living in the house 
not so much outside the house. Now you live, you got to show it on the inside to teach your children to believe in God that when trouble do come that you know how to stand because they're not going to be kids always. So you have to train up a child in the way it should go and so when it get old it won't depart from it. But how much have you learned? And that's the thing. What do you have on the inside of you? Do you have enough to teach somebody the truth of God's word, to trust him that even in this day and time, what we're supposed to be doing is training, mm. training, teaching our child how to pray, teaching them how to read the word of God, teaching them not to fear. Because the only way we, you learn how not to fear is you're taught this and you're taught it through the word of God. So if you don't teach me no word, you just teach me the TV and that's all I'm going to look for is the television. But when the trouble come and you have taught me the word, I know how to stand, even though I might be young to you. But in the spirit, it's still the same. Mm. Spirit isn't based on the age. It's based on what you know the spirit can do. I'm glad you say that because I can feel what my mom and daddy taught me now. I told my wife earlier today, I'm so glad that my father mentored me. And now I know how to fight against the enemy. Yeah. And not only did he teach me, but he showed me. Yeah. You got to understand that. That's right. Teach your children. We're in a spiritual warfare. Pastor, this, this is a great time for the families. Um, you know, we all have these times where we're constantly going and coming and going and not really taking time out. And God has slowed everything down and shut everything down. So now we have to focus on those that we're supposed to care the most about, which is our family members. Um, and like uh, First Lady said, teaching, um, first, first people that we need to minister and disciple are people in our homes. Yes. And so, you know, I just speak on what we've done recently. This has been a powerful time for us as far as prayer is concerned as a family. Um, you know, and when you miss that and many times you try to not do it, Kids, if they've been taught right, they'll say, hey, aren't we going to pray? Mm. Mm. I got called out twice. <laughs> <laughs> By your daughter? By my daughter. She She's only, what, six? She's six years old. Wow. Yeah. And we started that, that, that um, tradition since we've been home, like morning devotional. And he's like, all right, we take Saturday and Sunday <laughs> off. It's Monday, Daddy, let's go. <laughs> and um, and, and they, they'll keep you on track more so than anything. And, it's, and to your point, it's the integrity of, are you going to keep your word or are you going to stay steadfast into what you say is important? Because mm -hmm. kids learn your priority by your choices. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sa said a, a word that people don't like to hear anymore. He started a tradition. Mm. Now, some traditions, as we know, they are beneficial. Yes. You can, you can you know, try to figure out where it came from and all of that, and that's all good and dandy. But a prayer is a if you want to call it a tradition, is a good tradition. Coming to the house of God, no matter what's going on, is a good tradition. Mm. Um, trusting and, and praying to God is a good tradition. Fasting is a good tradition. We should not forget about these things because these are the things that have brought us to where we are today. Now, on that note, I believe the church has to get back to some of those traditional things. Yes. Got to get back to them. That's how we're going to win. And, and the and the litmus test is going to be when we return. That's right. When we had off season, our pat, uh, our uh, pat, <laughs> our coach used to give us <laughs> our coach used to give us a pamphlet mm. off season workout. Yeah. And you got to mark and you got to make your progressions. And as soon as we come back the first day, we run it. We're going to see who's been doing what they're supposed to do. That's right. While you were at home. Mm. Now it's off season. I'm not going to be there. Nobody's going to wake you up. Ain't going to be no whistle. You know what's expected of you. It's in the book. We gave you a book before you left. So what you're saying to me is, at this point, I should be able to call any preacher and say, come on, you got to preach. Mm -hmm. yes. Any deacon. Mm -hmm. Come on, time. you got to be. Missioner, come and teach. Mm -hmm. You got all this time. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 20 and 7 passage says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we shall remember the name of the Lord our God. Now is the time to remember his name. You got to, again, go back to know who to call on. Yes. During, during this off season, as you so eloquently put it, you better know who to call on. 
Yeah, you see, I, I used to hear I used to hear preachers preach and say, "What you gonna do when you can't get to the pastor? What you gonna do when you can't get to a saint of God? What you gonna do? You better learn how to pray for yourself." God, you see, He knows how to make us realize who He is. Let me let me move on a little bit. Number three, we should be the church. We should be the church. We shouldn't try to be anything but the church. Matthew 5 and 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. In the midst of fear and uncertainty, Christians have a tremendous opportunity to be the salt in the light of the world. Uh, salt is a preservative. We as Christians should hold things together during the tough times. Uh, imagine what the next few months could look like if the church took the lead on giving, compassion, and community care during this trying season. Uh, what an impact we could make and what a light we could be. The church has to be what the church is. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are the salt. I don't want nobody foot trodden over me. We are the salt of the earth. Number four. We should continue to pray. Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If you want the land healed, church folk, Christians, it's time to pray and don't be boastful. Be humble. Do you know who you're praying to? Some people think they're better than other folk. Some of them even think they're on God's level. You better be humble. You got to humble yourself. You got to seek God's face. Seek his face. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek him. And turn from their wicked ways. And again, I'm going to tell you, there are some people that are in church, some leaders that are doing wicked things. God wants them to turn. Turn. Repent. That's what turns me. Repent. And don't go back to it. Then will I hear from heaven. You said his ear. That's right. And will forgive their sin. And will heal their land. This land needs a healing. The church has to be the one that brings the healing. Yes, sir. I cannot drive that home enough. That's the only God-given avenue for sin is the church of God. The blood of Christ, the church of God, the preach word of God. It is the only solution for a sinful fallen world. Got to mm. come back to God. Got to. One thing that I'm noticing as far as that scripture is concerned is that God looks at our heart. We can be on our knees praying and saying, I repent. And God knows that we're only saying that because of the condition that we're in. Now, what you're going to do after the condition is over with? Are you going to go back to what you were doing? So God is actually looking at the true heart. And I am truly repenting that I will turn and will not go back to what I was doing. So that goes back to... Lip service. Yes, sir. But what's in your heart? That's right. You no, know, Pastor D. A man can't repent of something that he don't feel sorry for. And if there is no conviction, if he doesn't feel that he's wrong, and you're, you're absolutely right, First Lady. A person could sit there and say that, and just for the moment, to you know, you know, like my mom, when I used to get in trouble, my mom would say, "Do something, okay." If I was determined to keep doing it. I'll straighten up for five minutes, and then as soon as she leave, 
I'll start doing the same thing over again. Repentance means you got to be convicted. So, Elder Johnson, people, as long as they're in an atmosphere of church, they repent. But when they leave, they forget mm -hmm. about God. The same way when your mother left the room, mm -hmm. you started acting up again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Started acting up again because you, uh, it, it's like when we, when, when you look at the gospel, like in the book of Acts, when Peter opened up the doors of the church, when he got finished and told them that they were guilty of murdering the son of God, the Bible says that they were pricked in their heart. That means they felt it. And the only way a person, you know, it's almost like, say, for instance, we had this conversation before. A criminal should not feel comfortable in a police station, That's knowing right. that he robbed the bank or murdered somebody and then go, anytime you see a cop, he's going to feel uncomfortable. Watch this, though. I'm going to show you when they feel comfortable. When the police is dirty. Yeah. When the preacher is wicked. Yeah. He's comfortable. Some of the stuff that they're doing, they're doing it with the preachers. Mm -hmm. and so they feel comfortable. Feel comfortable. You know, I can't tell you, you can't, if the blind lead the blind, they both gonna fall in the ditch. That's right. <laughs> Perhaps the greatest altar call that could ever happen because anybody who is serving eye service, mm -hmm. when there's nobody looking at you, are you gonna move? Like now, there's nobody but you and God now. That's right. And anybody that you were with, you're not with physically at least anymore, right? So if there's any repentance that happens now, it has to be true because you're not doing anything to appease somebody who sees you. You're not doing anything just to, you know, you know properly respond to whatever has been asked. Man, that, the repentance that happens in a closet it's true repentance because now you're not trying to save face mm -hmm. or repair a reputation. Only you know what you need to repent from. Wow. Sometimes you can repent, but after you get up, sometimes you have to change your environment because mm -hmm. anybody who talks negative to you is not looking for you to live. They're looking for you to die. But when you speak positive words into me, it's for me to live. That's a great point. Like, for anybody want to know if real repentance happens, you should now hate what you used to love. Like, when God pricks your heart with that, the stuff you used to do, you should now hate it with a perfect hatred. Like, love what God loves and hates what he hates. Like, so those people that brought you to that place at one point, you shouldn't have joy now when their name shows up in your phone. You know? It like should the be Bible different. says, any person that's a friend to this world is a is an enemy of God's. Mm -hmm. You know, you we cannot love the world and love God too according to the scripture. The the, the two don't mix. They don't they, they don't mix. It's, it's almost like, you know, I noticed that the devil ain't gonna never get saved. That's he ain't gonna do it. He, he he's it ain't gonna happen. You know, we you know we got everybody speaking in tongues now. Everybody dancing. Every, everybody shouting. But the rules of holiness will never change. The foundation of Christ, nevertheless, the foundation of God, it stands for sure. It is built up upon the apostles. Like, uh, we, can't go around, we can't go around that. Like, they talking about getting rid of it. it it's not going to happen. And the message of the cross will always work. And like I say, repentance will only happen only when a man feels convicted. And um, a, 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 a man getting a house ain't gonna convict him. He getting a car ain't gonna convict him. Getting a, getting some money ain't gonna convict him. The only way it's gonna happen, sin has got to be preached against. It has to, you know, unless unless you tell them they're wrong, they're gonna always think they're right. And 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 right now, I don't know, you know, you know. Like we're talking about the church. Now, the church is the mystical body of Christ. Every, you can get in the building, but you can't get in the body. You, you know, 
Everybody that's in the body got to be baptized. They got to be a born again believer. It's only one way into the body. Through the name of Jesus. There's no other name given under the heaven. According to the scripture, Acts 4 and 12, whereby men can be saved. Other than in that name. You can't dodge around. There's no other plan. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no way around that. Anybody that's listening, Pastor, and I've had conversations more so for with, my demo, with my demographic. When you hear the word of God, it is supposed to get you where you supposed to be. It's going to meet you where you are, but it's supposed to get you where you're supposed to be. So that prick that you talked about, it's, it happens for each and every one of us. If you don't feel a prick, God ain't talking to you or you're not being honest. And there is a, there is a, there is an impulse to fight against that. Like, I, I remember having a conversation on several occasions, and the response I got was, ah, you're making me feel bad. It's not me. You agree with the word that was said, and it made you see what's inside. And I just want to invite anybody that's listening to this right now, same thing Christ told Paul. Don't kick against the pricks. The prick is what's saving you. But if you ignore it over and over, in the moment you lose your conscience, you don't feel bad anymore, you're done. But as long as you can still hear the word and it pricks you, don't kick against it. So, 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 I understand everything y'all saying. So what about these folk that are straddling the fence? It's not good. See, straddling the fence to me is like somebody saying, Pastor, I'm going to the store, but can you give me a little bit more money just in case? <laughs> so what they want to they want to be on the world side, and they want to be on the church side, and God don't like that. He's gonna vomit you out of His mouth. He would if you were either hot or cold, right? But lukewarm. not lukewarm. Lukewarm. Um, and you talk about Pastor straddling the fence. The Bible declares that God said, you can't serve me and mammon. Right. You, you can't serve God and the devil at the same time. You are torn between two opinions. And you, you are betwixt between two opinions. And, and nobody can survive being torn apart. Mm. So you got to make up in your mind, saint or sinner, who are you going to serve? Who are, are you going to live for Christ or are you going to go and have your fun and live for the world? But know that after we close our eyes for the last time, that's not the real death that we need to be concerned about. There is another death mm. that people don't talk about. The lake of fire is that second death. There's, there's a judgment that's coming, so we got to make up in our minds now. For God, I'll live, and for God, I'll die. That's like used to watch movies, horror movies, suspense. They take two cars and the cars, the rear end of both cars are there and they'll take a person and tie them to both cars mm -hmm. and both drivers put their cars in drive. Yeah. What's going to happen? and putting their hands to the plow and looking back. He said, you're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. But let, let, me, let me show you something. The other day, let me admit it, me and my wife was in the car. And I looked down while I'm driving at my phone. One second. When I looked up, I was headed towards some trees. So with that plow, when you look back, See, you think you're going straight, but when you look back, you don't went left or you don't went right. You got to keep focus and keep moving. Again, when was it Peter? Yeah. He walked on the water. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, everything was okay. But when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. You got to keep focus. Just about 
what your topic is talking about. Mm. Where we are now, we have to stay focused. Yes. We have to realize that it was God who saved us, and it's God who's going to protect us, and God is going to be the one who's had the outcome. Because he's God and you don't know what he's going to do. That's why he said, take no thought for tomorrow, for it to take care of itself. No matter where we are today, we don't know what's going to happen after we walk out this door. You don't know. So what you have to do is just stay focused and keep moving and trust in God. That's all you can do. So, so we should continue to pray. How should we pray? First Thessalonians 5 and 15 teaches us to pray without ceasing. Does that mean you have to pray all the time? All the time. <laughs> Sitting here praying. <laughs> I've fell asleep in my bed praying. Mm -hmm. it's that, it's that thought process, Pastor, the spiritual thought process that, you know, through the day, it's almost like um, being God's child, it's like, how can you go all day without saying nothing to him? Mm. You know, not, I mean, without having that, it's like something. It don't have to be every second, mm -hmm. but at least every other hour, something, a and, song, and, a message, or yes, to be. And, and the the thing about it is, you don't always have to have no long drawn out prayer. You, you know, I can I could be praying right here, and y'all don't even know it. That's right. That's right. God helped me three words with the right attitude and at the right time at the right saying. It's, that's more powerful than a, a whole hour of prayer. The only thing we need them to do is answer it and send help. And the prayer isn't always asking. It's thanking him and just yes. loving him for who he is. It's that relationship that you just say, you know, I appreciate that you woke me up this morning. Thanking you for having my right mind. Thanking you that you kept my family. Thanking you that I'm here today. So it's all, it's, it starts out with that relationship of just saying, God, I acknowledge that you're here. If you don't acknowledge me, I'm not going to acknowledge you. But the moment you show up and just fall on your face or you're sitting in your chair or wherever you're doing, you just got to automatically acknowledge him for who he is. Because we had exalted so many things above God. Now he wants to be acknowledged. Mm. You forgot me. You forgot I was the one that woke you up this morning, not the clock. So you forgot me. So now I'm going to do something to make you remember who I am because you have lifted up your pastor. You lifted up your, your family. You lifted up everything, and you forgot to exalt me because you said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And what you've been doing is drawing people unto yourself and not to him. See, and, and, and while we're right there, there was a lady in the Bible. The man of God came. He came by, and he he said, by this time next year, you're going to have a son. Yes. And they built him a condo. <laughs> I brought it on up to, to, to 2020. And he came, and at this particular time, he was, the, the man of God was gone, him and his servant, and she had a son. Yes. And uh, the son was in the field with the father. Some say he had a sunstroke, whatever. But the son got sick, and he died. Listen, I'm going to show you where I'm going. Scripture Cathedral, you got to know who your man of God is. Let me tell you why. The boy died, and, and the mother never told the father. He was dead. She said, I got the get to the man of God. Long story short, she got to the man of God and he said, tell her it's, oh, it's well. On Sunday, my wife got a call and the person said, I need Pastor D to pray for my brother because he has the, the coronavirus. He's in the hospital right now. I need him to pray for him. She wanted me to pray for him. She called my, well, I told my wife, get on the phone. I was sitting in my car, and I prayed with her. 
Today, her brother came home and everything is all right. You got to have a man of God in your life. Don't take that lightly. There are people that say you don't need a preacher. You don't need a man of God. You don't need a pastor. Say that again, Sean. How can you hear? Somebody said that in the comments. How can you hear? Except you have a preacher. You got to have a man of God. It's vital. And you got to be able to get to him. Some folk have disconnected from me. They cannot get to me. And you know what you say? Get to You get to my wife, you got me. You call Elder Parker, pastor, sister, so and so, bro. You get to Sean. You get. But some people disconnected. So what we got to do? We got to pray. Pray for healing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pray for strength. Pray for provision. Pray for peace. Pray for wisdom. Pray for unity. We all got to be one body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, we have to pray for everything. Everything. Number five. You got to put your hope in God. Remember, God is our healer. Psalm 30 and 2. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. If you cry to him, America, he will heal the land. <laughs> Remember this. God is our provider. Philippians 4 and 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to your job. <laughs> According to your 401k, which right now is rocky. According to his riches and glory. By who? When he couldn't swear by nobody else, he swore by himself. If he said he's going to do it, he's gonna, if God said it, that settles it. And you know what you got to remember? We got all these people that are in leadership positions in our world. We have kings. We have princes. We have presidents, prime ministers. But remember this. God is king of kings. Yes. <laughs> Psalm 47 and 7 says, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. Why do you think I praise him so much? Because he's been good to me. In yes, Scripture Cathedral, we still are a praise first church. Yeah, if I got somebody viewing me right now, just put a thumbs up and say, we are a praise first church. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And listen, I want every Christian, I want you to know, God has a Goshen for you. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. A Goshen. Yes, sir. You know what a Goshen is? It's a place of comfort and plenty. <laughs> and you're being protected and set apart. I'm set apart, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm set apart. I'm different. Yes. You see, too many people can't say I'm different. different. When you start talking like that, they think you're crazy. But I'm set apart. And, and then listen, I want the Christian world to know. That God has a Joseph for us. <laughs> he just told me that. I have a Joseph. And guess what? That Joseph is in high places. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like when they threw their brother in the ditch. And they sold him to the slave. God set him up in some high places. Because he knew what was coming. He knew a famine was coming. Somebody out there is a Joseph for the church. <laughs> and in high places. And they're going to get the church through this. 
Does anybody have a Goshen? <laughs> I'm glad I have a Goshen. Everything was happening, but it didn't touch Goshen. This thing will not touch the body of Christ. I got a Joseph. I got to go find my Joseph. Y'all not understanding. Not a, it, was, it was so long. They had forgot, some of them, what they did to their brother. They didn't even know him when they saw him. That's why you got to watch, oh my God, how you treat people. You ever, you, ever, you ever met somebody some years ago, and then you go in and you pass them in a mall somewhere, and they be like, hey, you remember me? You be like, who are you? <laughs> Joseph's own brothers didn't even know who he was. And the thing about it is, the king told him, go ahead, fill up this stuff. <laughs> go ahead, call them to the side, hey. Go ahead, put some, put them, give, put it on. Give, give them some more. Give them extra. That's what God. That's right. That's what God's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to bless His people. He's gonna bless them. That's why I put my hope in God. Yes, my friends, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean. On Jesus' name. On Christ. Yes, sir. The solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I'm glad I'm standing on the rock. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody on the rock tonight? Yes, sir. Anybody viewing us? Are you on the rock tonight? <laughs> Stay on the rock, y'all. God is getting ready to bring us out of this. And listen, while I'm right there, I don't know if I have some pastors on here. Listen, we're supposed to be the leaders. We need to get together. Stop going against each other. Get together. Let's get together. We got to fight this thing with everything we've got. There are no, what they say, big what? Big eyes, big eyes and little U's. We got to get together, pastors. We got to get, the, get together because this is affecting all of us. I don't care how big or little your church is. It's affecting all of us. But as long as we stay on that rock, it shall <laughs> be well. Because everything is going to be all right. Can y'all say that? Everything is going to be all right. That's why, again, that's why. I, I, I'm glad that the founder put the DNA of Scripture Cathedral to be a praise first church. And we just don't praise them when everything is going well. Uh, we praise them all the time. In everything. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Not just when I got money. Not just when everything is going right. Mm -hmm. If I'm sick, I'm going to praise him. Yes, I never forget when I was sick in 2009, I was laying on the bed with my eyes closed saying, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to praise him no matter what. Some folk won't praise him. They say it don't take all that. I beg your pardon. It takes all that and more. Yeah. Just like David, when he came into the city, he is a king. He didn't have to dance like he danced. He told his wife, if you think that's something, come out here tomorrow. Yeah. My God, man, what more can you do? You done stripped down. <laughs> come out here tomorrow. <laughs> you got to praise him. The only way we're going to get out of this, we have to praise him. We have to pray. Yes, and we have to give him everything we got. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Scripture Cathedral. Your pastor loves you. I miss you. Y'all some of the best members in the world. <laughs> but can you imagine what it's going to be like when we come back together? When all God's children get together. And they talking about, hell, I'm talking about right here. What a, what a time. What a time. What a time. Look, I might, I might not even preach. We just going to dance. <laughs> Yes. 
That's right. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving and to his, into his courts with praise. How dare you walk in here without a praise on your lips? You better learn how to praise him. Teach your children how to praise him. As a matter of fact, I told Minister, Minister Sharp, his daughter was on social media showing the different kind of shouts. <laughs> She's a church baby. You got to learn how to praise God no matter what. I don't care. I don't care what it looks like. Listen to me. Every child of God, it shall be well. Because God is your protection. He has you under his wings, yes, under his shadow. And we're going to be all right. Let me see. Let me see. Let me. Minister Shop, can you, can you pray for us? Yes, sir. Somebody needs this prayer, man. Somebody looking at us needs this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for allowing us to come together for this opportunity to be a blessing to the body of Christ for Scripture Cathedral. We thank you for our leader. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your covering throughout this time. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you continue to do for us, O oh God, the provisions that you continue to make for us, O oh God. There's somebody who stands in the need of a miracle even right now, Lord God, a miracle of healing, O oh God, a miracle of deliverance, a miracle of salvation, O oh God. And we know, Lord God, that you can do all things but fail, Lord God. We put our confidence and our trust in nothing else but you, Lord God. Your blood prevails over every situation, oh God, every circumstance in our lives, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done, all that you're going to continue to do. And we thank you, Lord God, that it shall be well, Lord God. Continue to keep your people covered and under your blood, oh God. We love you. We honor you. We praise you, Lord God. Help us to surrender completely to your will. Let your will be done. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And listen, if you need prayer, all you got to do is pick up your phone and dial this number, 202-483-9400. That's 202-483-9400. Or you can dial 301-333-5300. Once again, that's 301-333-5300. And listen, if you get an answering device, just go to extension 206. And we will get back with you and we will pray with you and for you. And according to your faith, everything will be all right. And listen to my scripture cathedral family. Y'all know this is Thursday night. I want you to plant a seed of $18 right now. All my scripture cathedral family, all our friends, plant a seed of $18. You can simply go to our cash app, which is dollar sign SCM Church. Once again. That's dollar sign SCM Church. Or you can go to our webpage, www.scm.church. And you can go on the tab that says online giving. Online giving. $18. Listen, we're going to get through this thing because it's affecting the whole world. But there's nothing, positively, absolutely nothing, too hard for God. Nothing at all. And listen, you got to you got to share this. You got to you got to uh, follow us because I'm telling you, when we all get together, we're going to have a time. A time. See, see, some of y'all, y'all had the opportunity to practice your shout. (laughs) Some of you had the opportunity to to uh, uh, rest your legs. Some of the praise team members in the choir, you rested your voices. The musicians rested their fingers and their hands and their feet. Man, we're going to have a time. It's going to be heaven on earth. How many believe that? And I just, I, I say this all the time. I just believe God is setting the church up for something big. I said it a long time ago. Something big is getting ready to happen in the Christian world. You just got to be ready. And I'm looking for God to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Young, old, black, white, Chinese, you name it. He's going to pour it out on all flesh. 
And we as the church, we as the body of Christ, all pastors, we got to be ready because they're coming. We need some laborers. Yes, sir. Because it's coming. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I'm going to say it like this. We better get ready. We got to get ready because I just believe it's going to come on us and overtake us. And this time, it's going to stick. Because people, have, we have never, never in the history that I know of been to the point where we've been not able to come to church for going on three weeks. Never. Never. And again, that's why you got to learn how to make your church right at home. Take one of your rooms. Make it a prayer room. Get your dance on in your kitchen. <laughs> your living room, your dining room, your bedroom. Turn your, turn your house into a church. Yes, sir. Scripture Cathedral, I love you. I miss you. And I hope to see you soon. God bless. Peace.